and welcome back. Man, did I have a good day today. I was able to go down to downtown Los Angeles, the Peterson Automotive Museum, and view the new 2023 C8 Z06 Corvette. Before I get to that though, I wanna thank everybody for the response to my first video, the launch video for this channel. The response was fantastic. I got more subscriptions than expected, more likes than expected. Got a couple comments and maybe even a couple shares. Now the first mission was announced in that video. If you're not sure what this channel is all about, please go back and watch the launch video and then you'll be up to speed. Now the first mission was to subscribe, like, comment and share. And all of you did great on that, but we still need more subscriptions to build the community. We need more likes to spread the videos around. Comments always help as well. And be sure and share the videos with your friends and encourage them to join the, com the community so we can all have a lot more fun. Now today, down at the Peterson Museum, was quite an experience. It was quite an adventure for me to get there. I had to rent a car, because my car is in the shop, drive through downtown LA traffic. It took me an hour and a half to go 55 miles. Once I got there and I got parked and I got in, everything was great. I got to view the full Z06 Corvette, got to view the half cutaway Z06 Corvette, and the engine, as well as a 1963 split window that they had there on display. And that brings us to our next mission. Mission number two is for any of you that were able to get down to that museum, you still got two days, and you took any pictures and made any video, please submit those to the channel. You send those in to c8corvettelife at aol.com. I'll put the link right here below and also in the description. So please send any photos or short videos that you have and I'll post them into the next video so that everybody can share an experience that we've all had at the museum. You can also, if you've already uploaded them to the cloud or maybe to Facebook, put that link in the comments and I'll go and chase them down. Or you can send me the link in the email. Okay, so here we go. Let's get on with the video and you'll see how much fun I had today. Hey, how you doing? Finally made it here to the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, downtown. I had to rent a car. It took me an hour and a half to go 55 miles. But I'm here, about to go inside and see the new Z06 C8 Corvette. I'll see you in a minute. All right, here we are, the new Z06. We'll start with the red mist metallic version. Absolutely incredible car. I'm really lucky that a lot of the features on this car are not available for my Stingray because I actually couldn't afford them. What I really love are these new body lines down the side. That extra scoop that comes way forward, absolutely amazing. All right, it's okay, go on by, no problem. Not got crowded today, a lot better than yesterday. Looked still a number of people here. I'm like trying to get a wide angle side thing. Here we go. These are what we might call the base Z06 wheels. Really nice. Now the front end has a, a much different splitter on it. So this is the non-Z07. This is the base, if you could call it that, Z06. I really like the way they've done the, the side scoop on the Z06. I'm thinking about trying to 
mimic some of these lines graphically on my stingray. That might be fun to do. Uh, the rear has some slight differences. You see a much elongated rear vent on the top. Beautiful. Now this has got the base Z06 ducktail wing on it. It's got a real nice shape to it. What I really like, the lighting in here is kind of odd. What I really like about this is how they've got the underside in black or carbon flash perhaps and the top in body color. That's a real nice touch. Let's see if we can get a look at the interior. So this has the base Z06 interior, which is the normal carbon fiber package. You can go inside. You have to stay two, two feet far away to the car. Okay. Get a little close. So let's uh, extend this out a little bit. That's why I brought this. Again. But the, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, uh, the waterfall subwoofer seems a little darker on the Z06. Than on the stingray. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you can do it again. Okay, thank you. I don't want you to drop your phone there and just crush okay. that car. No problem, thank you very much. Alright, we've only been here five minutes, I already got in trouble. <laughs> Looks like there's an extra radiator, or at least a screen in here. That's interesting. Here's the yellow one. This is the Z07 edition in a cutaway. So we'll go down the full side first. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see the Z07 interior of the level two carbon fiber. As this car, half of the interior is cut away. But it does have the nice carbon fiber wheels. Now I've been working with MRR design wheels to come up with a forged version of these wheels and they announced yesterday that those wheels are in stock. Both the forged edition of these wheels and the forged edition of the base Z06 wheels. Now here's the Engine appearance package for the Z06. It is absolutely crazy beautiful. We'll get to the engine, which is over here, in just a minute. This engine is absolutely incredible. Here's the Z06 wing, the Z07 wing, which I was hoping that they might have aftermarket availability for stingrays with this. I'm going to go around the other side and show you how the mount is different that I noticed. In the front, there's an extra radiator in the middle. And the Z07 has a further extended lip on the front end with a really accentuated canard on the side. Now, I plan to do some autocrossing. And I was considering some dive planes or canards for my stingray, but I don't think that's a good idea for autocrossing. You hit a cone or two, and those things will be ripped right off. Look how large the radiator is. Now, these cars have the Cup 2 R's, which is the racing edition, which you really wouldn't want to drive down on the street because you'd be hydroplaning any puddle you hit at all. It's just a good view of the all aluminum tub for the standard on all C8 Corvettes. And this is the aluminum roll protection. It doesn't look like much protection really, but it qualifies. It'll get you on the track.
And look at the size of these meats on the back. Okay, now, this is what I was noticing that on the stingray wing, the high wing and the spoiler, they just bolt directly onto the top of the bumper cover. But it looks like the Z07 wing is almost a chassis mounted wing, in that it's got a bracket that comes down and bolts to the inside ahead of the bumper cover. Now this is supposed to give, the whole car is supposed to have over 700 pounds of downforce. So I'd imagine this wing alone is probably over 500 pounds of downforce. So you really wouldn't want that just bolted to the top of the, of the bumper cover. And they've already thought of that. They've got it very, very secure. Here's a good look at the exhaust. Now, the outer exhaust have a special baffle on them that is supposed to send sound back into the engine compartment, where the inner exhaust let the sound completely out. So I believe that the outer exhaust ports are for when you have the, the valves closed down for quieter riding, and then the outer ones are for when you open the valves up and let the car really sing. Here's the transmission. You see how low the transmission sits in here? Now they've been able to accomplish having the full trunk space available even with the center exhaust. You can see how they've routed the center exhaust very low and then around to the center so it doesn't cost you any trunk space at all and you can still put your full roof in the trunk or two golf bags if you want to take your CO6 golf and you're that kind of guy. I just love this engine cover. Alright, so that's the cutaway. It's really nice that they do this. All right, so here's the new LT6 engine that is in the Z06. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details. If you really wanna know about this engine, check out Jeremy Wellborn's video. I'll put a link down in the description that he did yesterday in which he was speaking with one of the engineers of the engine about all the incredible advancements that they've made. I'll point out a couple things that I find very interesting, okay? One thing I find interesting is how they've lightened all the weight on all the moving parts on the interiors of the engine. You can see that here with the minimal profile of the pistons heads. They've done that to enable the engine to accelerate at an incredible rate. Another thing that's interesting is the fuel pumps are up here on top of the engine. Now normally the fuel pumps will be down in the fuel tank, but they have put them up here for better efficiency. They're mechanically driven, now I only wonder, a lot of times you see a lot of amateur track drivers out to the track and their fuel pumps fail and they have to drop the gas tank and pull the fuel pumps out of the gas tank and then repair them and put them back in. I wonder how that's going to work with the fuel pumps on top of the engine. I wonder if they'll be more reliable without being down inside the sloshing fuel tank and if they'll be more or less accessible. I'd imagine you just pull these two air intakes off and then the fuel pumps would be sitting right there. Another thing that they've done is the headers are a real nice four to two to one configuration. Now the GM and engineer was saying that this is done to create a perfect balance between performance and fuel economy and emissions. So they've got thought of everything. You see, there's dual throttle bodies, 87 millimeters, which is pretty large for a stock engine, especially when you have two of them pumping. And then dual intake manifolds. Now the intake manifolds, each side contains four flutes. 
or the engineer called them trumpets, that are designed in a way that they allow the air to enter the cylinders at more than one ratio of boost. So essentially, this intake system is providing a little boost to the engine while still remaining naturally aspirated. Now that boost level is not, you know, seven pounds or 12 pounds like you might have with twin turbos, but it's just a little more than one. So that's pretty good. Pretty nice that they've done that. That's what enabled them to get 670 horsepower, which is 150 horsepower more than the LT2 engine. And this engine only weighs about two pounds more than the LT2 engine. Another thing is this engine has six oil scavenge stages to keep the oil moving evenly and steadily throughout the engine. Now, the LT1 engine had one level of stage, one stage of scavenge, and the LT2 in the C8 has three stages, and this engine has six. So it's going to run reliably for a very long time. You can see here how the flutes are designed to drop the air down right into the air cylinder. Each cylinder has its own flute, so there's eight flutes. Also, between the two air intakes, there's three of these valves that open and close in sequence to equalize the air pressure going into each flute for each cylinder. Apparently the two back valves work in conjunction with each other and the front one works separately on a separate timing. The, L the Z06 has 670 horsepower naturally aspirated. The, the, the most horsepower ever in a naturally aspirated stock engine. Just amazing. Like I said, if you really want to know everything about this engine, check out Jeremy Wellborn's video. I will put a link down in the description for his video. I love all this chrome work. <laughs> yeah. I know the real engine isn't chrome like that, but they sure have done a nice job with the display of these things. The lifters are all special, the springs are all special. Each engine is hand built by a single individual, and supposedly they're going to have a program where if you buy a Z06, and I'm sure you have to pay an extra amount, that you can go there and you can hand build your engine. Okay, the original builder of the engine signs it and it had displays a plaque on the top of the engine. Well, this one here has no name on it. And supposedly, if you build the engine yourself, you'll have your name on the plaque. That's a pretty cool thing. Though I wouldn't trust myself to build an engine of this type at all. I am no mechanic. I am just a guy that's going to have fun with this car. So I'm going to end with this 63 Corvette that is sitting here. This was my first Corvette that I had with a 63 fuel injected. This one doesn't have any fuel injected badges on it. Mine was also a hard top convertible that you had to lift off by hand or a pulley system in the garage, which is what I had as a kid. Now I was given that car as a graduation present from my parents at 16 years old. Way too much car for a 16 year old. Now, I suppose they've got this on display here because the 63 was the first year of the Z06 package. It wasn't really publicly known, but if you had some inside information, you could order the Z06 package for your 1963 car, and it was a very track-directed package. I don't think my fuel-injected 63 was a Z06, but it was a monster. Oh, control again, that's twice. 
That's not bad. Only two times getting in trouble here. I have my mask down so I can speak a little better, but you know, it's all good fun. Now, I really love the interior of the 63s. Now, a lot of times you're going to see 63s and basic C2s with three tail lights on each side. Anytime you see that, you know it's a modified vehicle because they did not come that way. But it was a very popular modification. There's a better barrier there, can't go that way. Good thing that wasn't electrified. <laughs> okay.